What is up guys? I hope you're having a great day. Today we are actually installing the Corvette shift servo and the 2600 stall in the Silverado. So now the 2600 stall, I know it's not that big of a stall, it's, it's kind of a baby stall, but for daily driving purposes and the cam setup we've got going on, I think it'll work great. Over here is the shift servo. Uh, I've got some transmission fluid. <laughs> got some petroleum jelly. I will show you guys what that is for later. Uh, some brake cleaner. Now I am going to try my best to show you guys uh, removing the old torque converter and installing the new one. I've just got to figure out how I'm going to set it up and then also how I'm going to set up the camera underneath to show the removal of the shift servo. Once we get the shift servo out, I will show you guys over here how it goes together and all that. But yeah, let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some transmission fluid in the torque converter. Um, I don't believe that you are supposed to dry start it. Uh, everything I've heard, uh, my grandpa's told me, the internet has said do not dry start it without any uh, transmission fluid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna put about a quart, quart and a half in there. I don't wanna put too much in because when you go to put it on, it's just gonna spill out and make a giant mess. So you wanna have at least a quart in there. two hours later. All right, so that only takes a lot of bit of time. Um, go ahead and set some time aside when you're filling the torque converter because it does take a minute. Um, I do have a quart and a half in there now. Uh, don't be afraid once you start pouring in and if it starts to come up, obviously stop it so it doesn't spill out, but it will take all of it. So just give it some time, move it around if need be. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cap on it for now. I'm going to get the camera set up and then we can remove the old one. All right, so we're in here. This is not the most comfortable position. So this is probably not the best way to do it. Y'all can do like your measurements and everything. But what I'm just going to do is make sure that these are lined up right here to the top where the torque converter bolts go in. Then I'm just going to line it up right here. and then just make a mark just so that I know that it's all the way pushed or the torque converters pushed all the way to the back when we get the new one in. You will know like once it bottoms out like you have a pretty good idea. Um, the last thing you want though is to not have it all the way in and then just bad things happen. So we're going to go ahead and just pull this one out right now. And she's out. There will be a little bit of spillage, that's normal. So I'm gonna get this out and then get the new one ready. So this is a good time to take a look at the seal, make sure everything's good. Um, it is a good idea to replace the seal. Now, I'm not gonna replace the seal on this because I did have the transmission fully rebuilt, um, I think about two years ago or so. And I don't know how long this transmission is gonna last anyway with the cam and all that, so. We're gonna do our best, but that seal looks fine for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and not replace it. But if you're in there and you're not planning on putting a new transmission anytime soon, I do recommend replacing that. Let's try and do this without spilling anything. Kind of spin it back and forth. No way did I nail that the first shot. I did spill a little bit. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I did spill a little bit. 
Turns out, I did not nail it the first shot. That's why we're making mark. And it does not feel like it's all the way up against the back, so we're gonna keep going until, obviously it's in the back. There we go. Bam, lines up perfectly. All right, now I did kind of noob that up a little bit, but I'm thinking I got it in the first shot. Takes a little bit of moving around. But all right, she's flush, she's good to go. Let's move on to the servo. Now that wasn't the most graceful install, but we got it in. Uh, just goes to show that it is a good idea to measure or at least make a mark or do both, which I'm glad I did. Uh, I'm glad you guys could see it doesn't work out perfectly the first time. Um, and I will end up cleaning the engine bay. I'm sure some of you will make a comment about that. Also, I did forget to mention, it is a good idea to have the transmission supported, which my dumbass did not at first because I was moving the truck back and forth yesterday when I was cleaning and I forgot to put the jack back underneath it. It is a good idea to have it supported. So now we're gonna move on to doing the servo. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the camera underneath there, but I did bring the GoPro just in case. Here we are guys, we're on the GoPro right now. Um, I'm gonna do my best to show you guys what's going on. So first off, we've got this heat shield in the way right here. Um, it takes two 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this off and then show you guys. So you got, as you guys can see, I got the servo exposed. Um, trying to get a good angle here. There is gonna be a ring right in there that you are gonna have to get a flathead screwdriver and try and get up underneath it and pry it up. So what I'm gonna do is just chase it around with the flathead and then take some channel locks. Actually, let me see if I can, once I get that ring off, let me see if I can uh, show you guys what I'm gonna do. So as you guys can see, is it's leaking pretty good. I don't know if it's supposed to leak this much. Uh, as far as I know, is it's not supposed to leak that much at all, but the transmission has been sitting for a while, so maybe that could have something to do with it. What I did is I took the vice grips, got them on here, I just kind of twisted it up, and then pushed it in, like pulled it towards me and twisted it up. And the gasket that you see now exposed itself. So I took this pick right here, grabbed the gasket and then broke the gasket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue just pulling on the gasket. Remove that all the way. Yep, there it is. Pop that cover right off. Now I'm really glad that I'm gonna change this fluid here because this is not the best looking. So now that, now that I got that off, let's see if I can get just kind of pulling on it it wouldn't come out so what I did do is I just took this flathead and put it right here and it's like this is if you're having trouble getting it out just kind of put it right here right behind there now don't put too much pressure on it and it'll it'll release like I already released it so you just have to put a little bit of pressure on it and it'll pop out don't reef on it like don't bend anything but Sorry about that guys, right as I started pulling on it, the freaking battery died on the GoPro, so I swapped in a new one. Um, I just kind of placed it back, but let's see if we can get this out now. And she's 
out. All right, boys, we got it out. Now, if this seems rushed, I do apologize, but now the camera is trying to die on me, so there's a C-clip right here that needs to be removed, so I'm gonna pop that off, pull this shaft out, and then what you're gonna wanna do is decompress this piece right here. Um, I'll show you guys what I use, but decompress that, and then there's gonna be another clip here that you need to remove, and then the whole assembly will come apart, and we can replace it with the upgraded Corvette one. Now you guys can see the difference already in the size. Now, I'm not transmission people, so I'm not gonna go super in depth with you guys, but some science happens, and you get some firmer shifts and longer, uh, longer transmission life. So I got the C-clip off. Now the kit will come with a new C-clip and a new spring, so don't worry about it if it goes shooting off. Here's the stock spring, here's the new one. So we're gonna set these over to the side. Now, I did notice that this thing does, oh, here we go. Um, on the shaft here, it does have a little bit of a burrowed uh, edge right here, so it doesn't wanna pull out. So I just grabbed some sandpaper. You may need some sandpaper. I just have some 320. Um, and then just kind of lightly go over it and file it down. And then it should be able to slide right out. So the shaft has been sanded down. I got it smooth. Uh, there is, if yours does have an edge, you won't be able to remove it. So just, like I said, lightly sand it until you can pull it out. So I've got that removed. I got the retaining clip removed. Um, I pressed this down, took the poker. There's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of an edge right there that you can get up underneath. I just pressed on it and then it just lifted right on out. So now what we're gonna do is release this. There's just one big ass spring. Some of them will have more than one spring. Just make sure they all go back in there. Now that's all disassembled, I did forget to mention I cleaned everything, uh, I cleaned the shaft and all the other parts with parts cleaner. So everything's good to go. There's no metal shavings or anything. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and load this up with the spring. Uh, the kit does come with um, new gaskets for it. So that's where the Vaseline's gonna come into play is I'm gonna lube up um, all the new gaskets with Vaseline. And then once this is all put back together, um, we'll go ahead and install it. If there's anything else that I feel like you guys should know, I will go ahead and turn the camera back on. Here we are guys. Uh, I just went ahead and pressed this down, uh, just like I did to get it off. Press it down, make sure the spring is in there, pop the retaining clip in, uh, lube up the shaft, put it in, slide it through, uh, you'll get the spring in, drop the spring in, take the big washer, put it on top, pop the E-clip in. It just goes together exactly how it came apart. I know a lot of people hate the reverse order thing, but that's really what it was. It's very straightforward. Um, if you're at least somewhat mechanically inclined, you can, you can do this. I have faith in you. Just make sure everything's lubed up. Um, I did put quite a bit of, not quite a bit, but I put a decent amount of Vaseline on here. And then that just slides in like that. I've got everything in the order that it needs to go back into the truck. Uh, if you are at all scared at all, or lost, or afraid that you're gonna be lost, take pictures how it came apart. Um, this did come with a manual. I mean, it's not that good. There's literally just a couple pictures that show you, and that's good enough. So if yours doesn't come with pictures, go ahead and take your own pictures because it will help you. It is nice just to refer back to. So we're gonna jump back over there and install this thing. So what I ended up doing is taking some brake cleaner and I cleaned everything out in there. Um, got it nice and clean, obviously. Uh, took some Vaseline, rubbed up in there, lubed that up. Uh, you don't wanna go in dry. And the reason you use the Vaseline, I don't know if I explained it earlier, is because it'll just dissolve into the transmission fluid with like, it won't, it won't disrupt anything. So what I'm going to do is, I got this ready to go right here. Let's see if we can get... Make 
sure the spring is still on there. There we go. She slides right in. Cap is in. Uh, got everything ready. So now what I'm going to do is to get this clip on, I'm going to take a pry bar and set it somewhere. I think helps if you guys can see what's going on. Try and go against there. That may work. So I'm not going to be able to hold or show you guys the actual installing of it, but I will tell you guys um, how I did it because I don't know for sure if that's gonna work or not. It's just kind of a pain trying to do it with one hand and with my arms over my head. So hopefully when I turn the camera back on, it's installed and all is well. After an ass ton of attempts, I finally got it in. Ugh, I only almost separated my shoulder like twice. So what I ended up doing was, where did it even go? I took this here pry bar. Oh, also, while you're done or when you're done, give it a little whack with a mallet just to make sure that it's seated. So what I ended up doing, I'm trying to show you guys. I took this pry bar, put it up in the trans tunnel right there, and then just pressed on there, right there. So. <laughs> I slid underneath it sideways and pressed it onto it, like put the pressure on it with my head and then used both my hands to get the C-clip in. So I guess I'm using my head for something, but I'm sure someone else has a better way, but with the tools I've got on me right now, that was the best way I could do it. So she's in, like I said, once it's in there, the clip gets in, um, just give it a little whap with the mallet, that way it seats. I'm not even kidding guys like this was the hardest part of the whole thing was getting that back in I'm sure some of you might just have a breezing back what the hell is he talking about but if you do this just expect for this part to be kind of a pain in the ass all right guys so the camera camera died um, I'm not really sure how far I should hold this thing um, I'm doing the outro on the GoPro so yeah, not gonna lie, that was literally the hardest part was installing that last retainer clip. That was the hardest part. But transmission fun is done for the day. Um, like I said, if you guys are at least somewhat mechanically inclined, you guys can pull it off like no problem. Um, I will do the trans cooler at a later date. I just wanted to get all this in. Um, I probably will do the trans cooler once the engine, in, engine is in and everything. I don't want to end up bashing it up, doing whatever, getting the uh, engine in. So with that being said, um, the next video we will be installing the engine and hopefully, hopefully doing a, the first start with the cam setup. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. I do apologize if it kind of went on too long or if there wasn't enough information for some of you. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great night. It's a 2600 stall. It's not that big, but 